Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Christy. I'm a homeschool mom to three. And today we're gonna be talking about something that I'm asked all the time. And that is how to homeschool multiple ages. I think that this is something that Many people when they start homeschooling or even when you are actively homeschooling, you're always trying to find out what the best process is to homeschooling kids in a variety of different ages, no matter how many kids you have. Um, if they're all different ages and different levels and things, it can be a little bit tricky to get everything that you need to get done done. But today I'm going to give you a few things that I do in our homeschool to help make our days go a little bit smoother while homeschooling multiple ages. So just for reference, the ages of my kids are 11, 6, and 3. And the 11-year-old and the 6-year-old are actively actually in school and then my three-year-old we're doing a little bit of a relaxed preschool approach this year so technically I am doing things with all three children every day my first tip for you is to keep the independent subjects the ones that are leveled to to their specific age group that would typically probably be math um, and language art keep those subjects separate and independent. Many times I get the brilliant idea to all sit at the table at the same time and try to knock out everybody's subjects at once. Um, I'm really drawn to the one room schoolhouse type situation. I'm drawn to learning as a group and there definitely is, I feel like a place for that. But when it comes to those core independent subjects, it is so much easier if you have that one-on-one -on -one time with each child separately. Whenever I try to do math all together and I'm going from one child to the next, it just becomes really stressful. It also becomes really distracting to everybody because they like play or feed off of each other and you know are bouncing around and being distracting to each other and it just never goes smoothly. So that is my first tip is to keep their independent subjects truly independent. So work with one child at a time. The next tip I have for you is to fill the little buckets first. And what I mean by this is make sure you spend a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with the youngest children first. So whether that is, you know, playing with Play-Doh with them, reading them some books, or if they're doing a preschool curriculum, doing that first. I feel like my little ones are so much more ready to kind of like be quiet or be on their own after they've kind of had that time with mom. My littlest child, she loves that one-on-one -on -one attention and that time and so I definitely make sure to do her stuff first and then she just is happier. You know, she's ready to kind of be independent again and then I can work with the other kids without as many like interruptions or whining or needing my attention so much. Another tip to piggyback off of that one is if you have older children that have a hard time focusing when the littles are kind of like running around or doing their own thing, uh, take them into another room. So my oldest daughter and I do a lot of her independent work in her room with the door closed. I can still hear the other kids and what they're doing and what's going on. And I go out and check on them in between while she's doing something. But for actually reading lessons um, and reading books or what we have to do together, it's just a lot easier to do it in her room in the quiet. I feel like when I remove myself from the main area of the house, they aren't as ready to interrupt. Interruptions do still happen. They still come to the door and knock on it needing something and that's fine, but I definitely notice that there's not as many interruptions than if I am visible in the kitchen. Then the interruptions are just, they never end. Another tip that I have for you is to have the art supplies out and available. During school time, I find that if I have like, you know, I get the markers or the paint out and I just set them on the table and some paper, my kids will naturally just kind of go and start doing something. And I find the art projects, painting, drawing, that sort of thing is a really good um, use of time and it really occupies them well while I'm trying to do school with one of the other children. 
My next tip is to use what I call a binder system for your older kits. I mentioned using this system or starting this system with her in another video of mine. I will link that below for you. Basically, it's a three ring binder and I have tabs separating every single day of the week. And so what I do is on Sundays, I go through everything that we're gonna be doing for the week. I'll pull the math page out, I pull the language arts page out and anything else that she has to do every day. I will hole punch them and put them in the binder in each day category. And I also on the front of the binder have a schedule with everything that she needs to do each day so that she knows exactly what she needs to do, exactly what ex is expected of her. And it's all laid out in this binder so she doesn't have to go searching for different curriculum books to open up. She doesn't, she's not fumbling around with different things that she has to like open and search through and find what she's doing. It's all right there. And this has actually been like such a good thing for her because one, it's fostering some independence and ownership of her education, which is something I'm trying to kind of help her with. Um, and two, it gives her everything that she is supposed to do. She is aware of what she needs to get done. And it's just been such an easy way to organize that for her. And it's just working really well. And I definitely highly recommend if you have an older child that can kind of do some of their independent work truly independently, this works really, really well. So she typically will go through and do what is asked of her. And then obviously if she needs help during, she will come to me and ask me. If it's something that she can kind of skip over and come back to, she'll do that. Um, and then I will go through after I'm done with Emmett's work, I will go through everything that she did. So I will go over her math and make sure everything's good, ask her if she has any questions on it, if there's something she didn't quite understand. Um, and then I will go through and do some of our stuff that I like to be there for. I will do that with her at that point. So it's not completely on her, but it does help get her started and get some of that done and out of the way while I'm working with her brother or her sister. My next tip is to do the subjects that require the most focus for your child first. And for each of my kids, it's different. So for Lacey, like math, requires so much of her focus. It's a harder subject for her and she really needs to be like focused and ready to go. And I find that getting that out of the way first and then ending her day with something she enjoys more and doesn't take as much brain power from her is the way to go for her. For Emmett, he actually needs more focus with reading. So reading is a challenging thing and he's just embarking on this journey. So he definitely has to put so much more effort and focus to reading. And then math, it comes really easily to him and he has a lot of fun with it. And so I kind of usually do the reading with him first and then I will go into math after to end his day at a more kind of not as like brain intensive subject for him. My next tip is to keep a group subjects or group learning at designated times. And this kind of goes back to what I said first with keeping independent subjects one-on-one. Um, -on -one. The group learning, make sure that they know kind of when it's coming, when it's anticipated, and it's, for us, the group learning is just a fun time to come together. They really enjoy kind of being together and kind of collaborating and doing things together. It's a lot of fun. And this always happens on Fridays for us. That is when we do our group learning and it varies. You know, we do like geography, we do art, we do nature study or like a unit study of some kind. And it's a lot of fun and it gives us kind of something to look forward to at the end of the week. And yeah, I really love that. And I like keeping it kind of the same so they know what's coming. My last tip is to keep things simple. And I think that sometimes we can get caught up in having to do all of these different subjects, all of these different things that we want to cover, um, and the checklist and all of that. And I just want to urge you to keep in mind that not everything has to be completed every single day. It's really easy to kind of weave subjects in on alternate different days that those are on and it really helps kind of simplify your days and I always find value in not overloading our days. When we have a ton of subjects where we're doing math, science, history, language arts, 
arts, geography, whatever it is, all in one day, like we would never be done and we would be schooling all day long. And that is just stressful and it's hard to hold kids' attention when you stretch your days out that long. Um, I definitely recommend a block type scheduling to where, you know, maybe science is, is on Mondays or Monday and Wednesday and then history is on Tuesday and Thursday or once a week, twice a week. It doesn't really matter how many days a week you do what's best for you in, in that department, but I feel like alternating days, kind of spreading out what you want to cover throughout the entire week is so beneficial. And it really helps with multi-level kids like doing it that way because then you can kind of spread things out and you're not as spread thin because you are one person and you have all these kids that you're teaching and um, sometimes it can be really overwhelming when you have a giant to-do list that you have to get done. So I urge you to kind of look at it your entire week and using the time where you can and kind of breaking it up when you can. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing some tips and tricks to homeschooling multiple ages, multiple kids. I hope that it was helpful. If you guys have any tips and tricks that you find have worked really well for your family, please leave them down below for everyone to see and read. Everything is kind of trial and error. That's kind of with homeschooling in general. Like you got to try some things, see what works, see what flows the best. But hopefully some of these tips help. Maybe you'll try some. Let me know if you do. And I will see you guys in another video very soon.